A laser uses a unique process to generate light that can be brighter than any other light. Even a relatively low power laser can produce light that is brighter than the sun. The high brightness of laser light makes it more hazardous than ordinary light. An exposure to light emitted from certain types of lasers can be hazardous at distances extending many kilometers. Many locations have laws regarding the safe use of lasers. Heavy fines and jail time have been imposed to laser users that misuse a laser by pointing it at an unprotected person or aircraft. The person operating a laser ultimately has the primary responsibility for its safe use. To avoid causing an injury or creating a dangerous situation, it is important for laser users to understand the hazards associated with the operation of their laser, the proper methods available to control those hazards, and any laws or regulations that might apply. Laser Hazard Classification A hazard classification scheme is used to define a laser's potential to cause an injury to the eye or skin. These classifications are Class 1, not considered capable of causing an injury. Class 1M is not considered capable of causing an injury except when viewed through specific types of magnifying optics such as a hand magnifier or telescope. Class 2 emits visible light only and is not hazardous for accidental or momentary eye exposure. It is not normally considered a skin hazard. Class 2M emits visible light and is not hazardous for an accidental or momentary eye exposure except when viewed through specific types of magnifying optics such as hand magnifiers or telescopes. Class 3R. Under the right viewing conditions, the emitted light can produce an eye injury, but the risk from an injury actually occurring is relatively low for a momentary or accidental exposure. Class 3R lasers are not normally considered skin hazards. Class 3B. Eye damage is likely to occur if the beam is viewed directly or reflected from a shiny, mirror-like surface. This includes an accidental or momentary exposure. If the laser emissions are near the upper limits for Class 3B, the laser light might be capable of producing minor skin injuries or even pose a risk of igniting flammable materials. Class 4. Eye or skin damage is likely to occur if exposed to the direct or reflected beam. An exposure to scattered light can also be hazardous. Class 4 laser light can start fires, and when the emitted laser light interacts with certain materials, it can produce smoke and fumes that may be a breathing hazard. In some cases, it can even create plasma radiation. Class 3B and 4 lasers are the most hazardous types of lasers and require the most controls when used. Regardless of the hazard classification, almost all lasers, including Class 1, that emit visible laser light can cause a distraction or temporarily impair a person's vision under the right circumstances. At a minimum, Class 3B and 4 lasers must only be operated by trained and authorized personnel. Wicked Laser products are only intended to be operated under the direct supervision of the laser operator. Exercise good beam control. Terminate beams on appropriate materials. Never direct the beam at persons or an aircraft. Be aware of where your beam is going. Be aware of the effect of introducing optics or other targets into the beam. Know where reflections might redirect the beam. Prevent a fire hazard or damage to materials. Class 4 and some Class 3 beams can char, burn, or ignite materials. Especially avoid exposing dark, thin, and combustible materials. Do not wear jewelry or reflective surfaces when operating the laser. Enclose the emitting laser energy as much as possible. Enclosures need to be made up of materials that will not transmit levels of laser light above the maximum permissible exposure or be subject to damage from the anticipated laser exposure. Establish a laser control area. This area should contain the nominal hazard zone. Anyone occupying this area while the laser is operated must be protected from all laser hazards. All unnecessary personnel should be located outside the controlled area when the laser is operational. 
Laser protective eyewear should be worn by anyone in the laser controlled area when class 3B lasers are operated and must be worn by persons within the laser controlled area when class 4 lasers are operated. Wicked Lasers provides laser protective eyewear rated for the use with specific models of their class 4 laser products. Eyewear must be labeled with the protection it provides. Different countries have different requirements. You should contact a laser safety eyewear provider that is familiar with the requirements in your location for additional details. When using class 4 lasers, access into the laser controlled area should be controlled. Post warning signs at the entrance to laser controlled areas. Prevent the possibility of the beam going through a window. Create and follow standard operating procedures that are approved by a laser safety officer. Lasers operated around the general public or unprotected persons must be maintained at a minimum distance to accessible laser radiation of 3 meters above any surface which the general public would be able to stand during the laser operation or a minimum of 2.5 meters in lateral separation. This presentation only covers basic laser safety topics at an introductory level. It cannot cover every topic in the detail necessary for your specific laser use. Ultimately, the person operating the laser always has the primary responsibility for all hazards associated with the laser use. It is important for the laser user to understand these hazards, the proper methods to controlling these hazards, and the laws and regulations that might apply to the laser use at their location.